Hello, welcome back. I'm pleased to say that our first programme of the new year has brought a really positive response to all the videos and reconstructions shown tonight. There's certainly something for the officers here to work on. Good evening. The TV personality Jill Dando, who as Crime Watch presenter helped to send dozens of criminals to jail, was murdered on her own doorstep today. Tonight, the mystery over her death deepened with speculation that the killing may have been revenge for her anti-crime work. She was attacked at her home in Fulham in West London. A man was seen hurrying away. Hey, you and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this old video, I gotta stop saying that. We're going to look into a very high-profile unsolved case that happened in the UK in 1999. Jill Dando was an English journalist and presenter. She was popular, well-liked, and was the BBC's personality of the year in 1997. And she was attacked outside her home in London. By whom? We don't know, although one person was arrested and then cleared eight years later. It's a disturbing unsolved case, and it's important to note that she was also the host of Crime Watch, the TV show that, well, reconstructs unsolved crimes to appeal to the public. Maybe somebody didn't like what she was looking into. It's a case that has similarities to the Jodie Husentrout story, so let's stop babbing, get into it. Born on the 9th of November 1961, Jill Wendy Dando would go on to become one of the most famous faces in Britain. She grew up in Weston Supermare, Somerset, a town which still has her on their website. And had one older brother, Nigel, who would also go on to become a journalist. As a child, she was so keen to get on TV that she wrote to Jimmy Savile, hoping to get on his show. Oh, I hope he didn't write back. After studying journalism, she worked at the local paper, the Western Mercury, before going on to the Beeb, BBC, British Broadcasting Corporation, you dirty-minded mother. She joined the BBC in 1985. <laughs> Good morning from Jill and me. The time now is 7 o'clock. You're watching Breakfast News from the BBC. The storms which have battered Britain for the last three days are subsiding. Now the task of clearing up and counting the cost can begin. But before the winds abated early this morning, there was more destruction around the country. Another person was killed when a tree fell on her car in Hampshire. She started off in the regional radio department before going on to primetime TV, the big leagues, baby. She would go on to host breakfast shows, the one o'clock and six o'clock news, Travel programme holiday. Time to pack up your cares and woe now. BBC One's going on holiday with Jill Dando. <sighs> this is the life. Luxury motor home, or recreational vehicle as they call them here, will be my transport and my accommodation. Now the journey will take me more than 1,500 miles. That might sound a long way, but you have to bear in mind that Arizona is twice the size of England with less than a tenth of the population. Get off your voice and drink your milk. My journey starts in the city-state of Singapore. It's known as the Switzerland of Asia. Squeaky clean and efficient. This is the real thing. The true Wild West Ranch. Marvelous. Songs of praise from time to time. She was a devout Baptist. And eventually, in 1995, Crime Watch. Britain's most important unsolved cases. Now live, you can help solve them. And out of the murder of a tourist. This would attract 14 million viewers during her time in it. Jill's last episode of Prime Watch aired six days before her murder. Her own murder would later be be featured on a subsequent episode. 
I hope the case of what happened to Mike is not a future of that chapter episode. Jill was described in her obituary as a broadcaster with a feel-good factor. A kind person, the girl next door. She was a habitual winner of opinion polls on the person you would most like to go on holiday with, or dine with, or live next door to. Jill would be one of the highest profile BBC presenters, and had been the 1997 BBC Personality of the Year. She was booked to host the TV BAFTAs, and was also going to start a new series, Antique Inspectors, a show that had been filmed, but not yet broadcast. In December 1997, Jill met a gynecologist, Alan Farthing, who she met on a blind date set up by a, by a mutual friend. The date? It went swimmingly. Alan, who was separated from his wife at the time, finalised his divorce a few months later. And on the 31st of January 1999, Jill and Alan announced their engagement. The wedding date was set for the 25th of September 1999. Unfortunately, this would never happen. On the morning of the 26th of April 1999, 37-year-old Jill Dando left her fiancé Alan Farthing's house in Chiswick, and then went back to her own home in Fulham. Both are in London City, about 40 odd minutes apart. Now, she didn't often go to her own home. She was living with her fiancé most of the time, and she was actually in the process of selling her own house so she was never there, really. Jill reached the front door of her home at about 11.32am, and as she was putting in the key to open the door, someone grabbed her from behind. With his right arm, the assailant held her and forced her to the ground, so that her face was almost touching the tiled step of the porch. Then, with his left hand, he fired a single shot at her left temple, killing her instantly. It all happened in about 30 seconds from her getting out of her car. No one heard the gunshot. Now this is according to a former British intelligence expert. The gun was placed so close to her head that the gases escaping the barrel essentially exploded inside her head and covered up the gunshot. This also uh, proved to prevent the assassin from getting any, any blood splatter on him. Her body was discovered 14 minutes later. She'd be rushed to hospital, but, but was dead on arrival. Now, two neighbors saw the gunman making a hasty ale departure from the scene. They described him as a white man, well-dressed, dark hair, solid build, wearing a dark barber type jacket. It's thought that he also had a mobile phone. As you can imagine, the hunt for whoever did this, it was big. It was a big deal. Jill Dando, known and loved by millions, has been brutally murdered. The 37-year-old presenter died in hospital after being found shot through the head on her own doorstep. Jill Dando shot dead. Was it an underworld killing? Tributes from colleagues, friends and relatives tonight. Good evening. The TV personality Jill Dando, who was Crime Watch presenter, helped send dozens of criminals to jail, was murdered on her own doorstep today. Ever since Crime Watch started, We've closed by saying, don't have nightmares, do sleep well. And given Jill Dando's murder, you might think any reassurances sound hollow tonight. But the very fact her death provoked such a jolting shock speaks for itself. Jill's killing was almost unbelievable. And even though we here on the Crime Watch team have had such a bitter experience of crime ourselves now, it remains stubbornly true, even if it sounds incongruous. Her death was unprecedented, a one-off, and that crime rates in Britain are no longer rising, they are falling. It's not a perfect world, but it's not one to be frightened of either. So we say it tonight as we always have and we mean it. Don't have nightmares, do sleep well. And what could be a better epitaph for Jill? It's lonely here without her. An investigation was launched, Operation Oxborough. However, after a year, they had nothing. Whoever did this made damn sure they left little to no evidence. The police failed to find anyone fitting the description of the killer. Was it random? It didn't seem random, it seemed professional. But it was also in a location she never really went there. So if there was somebody waiting there for her, they'd be waiting a while. Her neighbours also saw no one fitting that description in the area before the, the murder. Um, 
So then they could have been following her, but again, it happened within 30 seconds of her getting out of her own car, and nobody saw any other cars in the area unless there was a car down the road. It was either random or very well planned out using, like, radios to track her movements. This is a somber, and for me, a surreal Crime Watch UK. For all of us here, it can be grueling coping with crimes against victims who are strangers. It's been almost unbearable dealing with Jill's death. Eventually, suspicion would fall on a local fella named Barry George. Barry was known to police. He had impersonated a police officer, had a series of arrests for indecent assault, served time for attempted rape, had snuck into Kensington Palace, then home to Prince Charles and Princess Diana, and was diagnosed with Asperger Syndrome, Epilepsy, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, and estimated to have an IQ of around 75. Barry was put under surveillance, and arrested on the 25th of May 2000, and charged with Jill's murder on the 28th. The evidence for Barry George's conviction hung on a microscopic particle said to be gunshot residue found in the lining of his coat. On the 2nd of July 2001, he was convicted of Jill's murder by a majority of 10 to 1, and sentenced to life imprisonment. As the case against Barry appeared skinny as shit, he appealed. He appealed quite a few times, in fact, and then eventually, in 2008, the dodgy forensics gunshot residue shit that would be excluded from the case because it was not really anything to begin with, that would be excluded and he would be, uh, he'd be released from prison. After more than eight years in prison, Barry George is a free man, cleared of the murder of TV presenter Jill Dando. He left from the back of the court, trying to escape the cameras. Mr George's family have campaigned tirelessly for his release. We're really delighted to finally have justice. I want to thank everybody who has supported us through all these years. Special thanks to Barry's legal team, to Mojo and to all of the other agencies who helped miscarry to justice victims. A huge thank you to the jury. They obviously work very hard to ensure they correctly interpreted the circumstantial evidence in this case. We've been fighting for many years. Now we need time to get back together as a family. We also hope that the police will now look again into the murder of Jill Dando. Thank you. And the murder of Jill Dando, it would remain unsolved. So, who could have done this? Well, the Serbian or Yugoslavian connection is one that's come up again and again and again. See, just a few weeks before her death, Jill had fronted a BBC appeal for aid for the Kosovan Albanian refugees fleeing ethnic cleansing during the Yugoslav Wars. Three days before she died, British planes had bombed Radio Television Serbia in Belgrade, which was owned by Serbian leader Slobodan Milosevic. Some 16 members of staff were killed. As thousands of people from Kosovo have left their homes and arrived on the borders of neighboring countries. This is a massive exodus. Around 600,000 people are on the move. These refugees have been walking for days. When they arrive, they're dehydrated, hungry, exhausted, and cold, and yet there's nowhere to house them. The main countries they're fleeing to, Albania, Macedonia, and the region of Montenegro, are poor and they can't cope with this mass influx. That's why the Disasters Emergency Committee is today launching an appeal on behalf of 12 leading UK aid agencies. They need your help to provide food and shelter to the refugees who have nowhere else to turn. Was she killed in retribution? Two days after she was killed, BBC News Chief Executive Tony Hall had to go into hiding after someone claiming to be a Serbian activist telephoned the BBC saying, Yesterday I called to tell you to add few numbers to your list, because your government, and in particular your Prime Minister Blair, murdered, butchered 17 innocent young people. He butchered, we butcher back. The first one you had yesterday, the next one will be Tony Hall. The goodbye. The voice was guttural, with a mid-European accent, exactly like whoever did that really good impression sounded. How true this is, we don't know, but 
Journalists in the Balkans had a bit of an ill history of being killed in exactly the same way Jill was. What are the odds? There were also crimping marks on the bullet, as the cartridge case was tightened around the bullet. That was slightly irregular, which suggested that the bullet was handmade, perhaps a hitman's trademark. However, no solid evidence has ever been able to prove a Serbian connection. So who else? Well, it could have been a stalker, someone infatuated with El Jill and who was not too happy she was, you know, getting the L rock in her finger. Police identified some 140 people who were obsessed with her, including men who had sent her sexually explicit fan mail or tried to arrange to meet her. Detectives tracked down the 140 who fitted the profile of the obsessed fan, and none were found to be in the area that day. Jill's ex-boyfriends, they were also tracked down and eliminated from suspicion. Now, is it a coincidence that Jill presented Crime Watch and would go on to be a victim featured on it? Perhaps she had angered criminals whose activities she helped expose. In a 2017 program, an anonymous hitman told a police officer turned investigative journalist that he knew who the culprit was, but was too scared to name him. Sounds like bullshit. Although the assassination was very clean in some ways, it was, uh, professional, even it was very unclean in others. For example, the killer left a spent cartridge at the scene, used no silencer on the weapon, did it in an area there would be a lot of witnesses in, in broad daylight, and in a place that was no, they had no clear getaway from. Police did carry out extensive inquiries in the criminal underworld, but ultimately discounted that it could have come from a gang or something like that. Another theory is that Jill learned there was a child abuse ring in the BBC and was going to expose it before she was silenced. This would, sadly, come out as fact over 10 years after her death, when, in 2012, it emerged that a number of BBC employees, most notably Jimmy Savile, had been abusing children for years. Honestly, it seems to have been a widely known secret in the BBC, but who knows if she was killed for it. The revelations of sexual, sexual abuse by Jimmy Savile we've heard so far, and that are still coming into the police, are awful. As the Director General of the BBC, I have made clear my revulsion at the thought that these criminal assaults were carried out by someone employed by the BBC, and that some may have happened on BBC premises, as well as, we now discover, in hospitals and other institutions across the UK. Most recently, in 2019, the detective who led the investigation into Jill Dando's death said he didn't think it would ever be solved, so thanks, that's great, good, fantastic. Disturbing case. As I said, a lot of similarities to the Jody Hoosentrup case, a popular, well-liked, you know, public figure meeting a tragic, unsolved end. Unsolved date, at least. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, if you'd like to watch some more of my videos, please work away. And I will see you, as always, real soon in the next video. Take care of yourselves. Mike out.